Hi everyone, welcome back. Having discussed in my last video about how to bind data to the Angular grid, now I'd like to move on to how to perform CRUD operations with observable data on the Angular grid. In case if you are not familiar with how to bind data to the Angular grid, I request you to watch my last video and then continue to listen here to have a better clarity. Now before starting to perform CRUD actions on the Angular grid, I must configure all the necessary edit settings on my grid. Let me show you what are the settings to be done in the application now. So here I am going to use my existing application with the observable data binding code. As a first step, I should open the app.module.ts file and here I need to import and inject the edit service from ej2 angular grids package. Then I need to open the app.component.ts file and here I need to enable the edit settings property of grid. Let me define the edit settings variable of type edit settings model and here to make use of this edit settings model I need to import it from ej2 angular grids package and then I need to define its sub options allow editing, allow adding, allow deleting as true and also I am setting the edit mode as normal. So there are three editing modes available in grid which we will look on to in detail in my next upcoming video. So now I will set this edit settings variable to the edit settings property of the grid. Once I done with these two steps, now I need to enable the toolbar on grid so that I can choose the editing options from the toolbar. For that I will open the app.module.ts file and here I need to import the toolbar service from ej2 angular grids package and also need to inject the same within the providers section. Now let me switch on to the app.component.ts file and here I'll define a variable toolbar of type toolbar items. To make use of this toolbar items, I need to import it from ej2 angular grids package. So I'm importing it. And now within the ng on init method, I have defined the toolbar items like add, edit, delete, update and cancel and assign the toolbar variable to the toolbar property of angular grid. Let me save my application now. Now in the output page, you can see the built-in toolbar items that are added to the grid and you can start to edit and save any of the records from it. Now let me continue with the topic on how to perform CRUD operations with the observable data on the grid. As I have already shown the initial steps of how to bind the observables to the angular grid in my last video, I'll directly proceed with how to write code to start inserting a new grid record. Before I start to code for the CRUD actions, I would like to insist the importance of primary key column with which I can uniquely identify a particular grid record. So while working with the CRUD actions, the primary key definition is a mandatory process. In case if the primary key is not defined on the grid, then the edit or delete action will always takes place at the first row of the grid. So here I am going to make this id field as primary key column so that no repeated id values are allowed on multiple records. To set the primary key on id field, I am going to define the grid columns through e-columns directive and now I have added the isPrimaryKey property for this id field and set its value as true. Now I will start to write a code for adding a new record into the grid. Let me open the productstoreservice.ts file and here I will define a method addRecord which is of type observable you can see that I have defined a parameter state of type data source changed event args and in order to make use of this data source changed event args, I need to import it from ej2 angular grids package. And now I will return the http.post method here with the parameter that includes a remote API call, a new data object that is to be added as well as the http options. So this is nothing but the header options. So let me show you how to define this now. So first import the HTTP headers from angular slash common slash HTTP path. And then I have defined a constant variable HTTP options and assign the HTTP headers options like this. And now I can make use of this HTTP options as a parameter to my post method. So now let's move on to the grid code and define the data source changed event of the angular grid which triggers whenever any of the CRUD actions takes place. So this event will trigger whenever a new record is added to a grid or when a particular record is being edited or deleted from the angular grid. 
So I have defined the data source changed event method which receives the argument of type data source changed event args. So to make use of this data source changed event args, let me import the data source changed event args from the EJ2 Angular Grids package. So within this event method, I'm checking for a condition whether the state dot action is equal to equal to add which indicates the state that I'm currently inserting a new record into the grid. So within this condition, I'm going to subscribe to the observable written by this add record method. And also within this subscriber method, I have made a call to the end edit method of grid to save and display the newly added data on the grid UI. And before I start to insert a new record, let me define another grid event, which is data state change event that triggers on other grid actions like sorting, filtering, grouping, and so on. So I'll define the data state change event method here. And within this event method, I'll invoke a call to the execute method to retrieve and bind the grid with the latest emitted values. Now I'll save my changes and move on to the output page. Here I'll show you how the newly added records are inserted into the grid. I'll start to add a record by clicking the add button from the toolbar. And now I'll simply add the values and hit the enter button. So now you can see the newly added record. If you notice while adding a new record, the new row will be added at the top of the grid. And if you want to change it to display at the bottom, then I need to set the new row position property and set its value as bottom within the edit settings property. Now I save these changes and now when I click on the add button from the toolbar, you can see the new row added at the bottom of the grid. Now let's move on to the editing option. Let me open the service file and to handle the edit action, I'll define the update record method. And here you can notice that I have used the http.put method and I have passed the same parameter list which I have sent in the add record method. So the only changes here is state that data will be holding the modified data which needs to be updated. So the service file changes are done and let's move on to the app.component.ts file and here within the data source changed event, I'm adding a condition to check for the edit action and within this condition, I have subscribed to the observable written by the update record method and also made a call to the end edit method of grid to save and display the modified data on the grid UI. In the same way to handle the delete action, let me open the service file and here I'll add the delete record method which accepts the argument of type data source changed event arts. And within this method, I'm making a call to the http.delete method by passing the URL as well as the header options. In this case, along with the API URL, I need to pass the ID of the deleted record. So here I am accessing the ID value from the state.data argument. And now let me show you how to call this delete record method from app.component.ts file. For this, I need to add another condition and check for the request type as delete. And within this particular condition, I'm subscribing to the observable written by this delete record method. And within this subscribe method, I'm again calling the end edit method of grid to refresh the grid UI with the modified data source. So this is how you can handle the CRUD operations with observable data binding. So now let me show you how it works. I'm saving my application now. Now to start with editing a record, I'll simply select a particular record and click the edit option from the toolbar and modify the name value. Click the update button. So the changes have been saved now. And if I want to delete this particular record, again, I'm simply clicking on that particular record to select it and then clicking on the delete button will delete that record from the grid. All right. Now let me summarize some of the important points which we have seen in this video. We have seen how to handle the insert, update and delete operation on Angular Grid with observable data binding. Also we have seen that the primary key plays a major role to perform any of the CRUD actions on the grid. And finally make sure that you are maintaining the same observable instance for every CRUD actions on the grid. If you have any further queries on this topic then please post your comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you find this video as useful, click the like button and subscribe to our channel as well. Thank you.